And I am going to share my screen. Okay. All right, you guys. So um, actually, before I get going uh, about about uh, having some discussions about this, I'm going to I'm going to try something. So Zoom is now uh, normally I use other polling tools, but Zoom just um, uh, gave us some new features. So I'm trying this. So what I first I do is we'll take about uh, call it two minutes and I'm going to open this poll. And um, it just simply says, I want you guys to name some disasters. So when, when you hear the word disasters, uh, uh, tell me about one, specific ones that you can, you can think of. Um, if you don't know the full name, you can describe it. But you know, I'm, trying to, I'm curious as to what, when you guys hear the term disasters, what pops into your head? So um, I'm going to open up a, a text box. And um, you can separate different ones by a comma if you want. Um, you can you can type as many as you want, but do try to type in at least a few, at least you know three, four, five kind of thing. And so I'm going to launch this, and hopefully you guys can all see that. So we will take about let's say two, let's say 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 three minutes, and see if you guys can um, think about it for a second and start typing stuff in there. And I will pause our recording while that happens. You want me to just like type it, what, like the disasters in the chat? Uh, sure, sure, yeah. So for some reason you guys uh, couldn't see, it's interesting because it says, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so it says like 10 of you guys were able to do it, but the others weren't, or, or it looks like five of you haven't. So I'm not, yeah, that, that's a great, I'm going to take a screenshot of this and just uh, ask people what's going on. But um, yeah, so, so for some reason, you guys couldn't take, uh, just, you know, toss two or three examples in the chat and we'll, we'll go from there. I just wanted to let you know, for me, it actually did pop up, but once I typed in my, like, response, I went to press submit and it would not let me submit, like, the submit button wasn't like blue. It was like dark gray. I tried to click it and it wouldn't let me. All right. Well, that's why I haven't used these polls in the past. <laughs> so, so thanks you guys for, uh, for, for suffering along with this. Um, I appreciate it. So uh, great feedback. Thank you. Um, yeah. So go ahead, hit submit now. If you weren't able to just toss your stuff in the, in the chat. And we will, uh, I'll close the poll in about 30 seconds, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna close it down now. Okay, so if I do this, let's see what you guys see. Okay, so this is yeah, this is clunky, but but okay, so so um, you guys can see my screen still. Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, it looks like we got a uh, hurricane, uh, got some hurricanes, tsunamis, Thomas fire, Katrina, Santa Barbara oil spill, more hurricanes, um, uh, uh, rivers on fire, um, campfire, uh, the recent. Um, uh, volcanic explosion and then subsequent tsunami from Tonga, uh, COVID-19, uh, the freeze in Texas last year, oil spills, um, uh, wildfires, hurricanes, tsunami, volcanoes, chemical plant. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, train derailments. Okay. Uh, dam, the San Francisco dam, um, Deepwater Horizon, oil spill. Okay, cool. Ooh, Pompeii, nice, good, I like that. And then let's see, in our, um, where am I? In our 
I don't know. I don't think you guys can see my chat the way the screen is shared, but we got uh, more examples of earthquakes, landslides, tsunamis. Okay, cool. Great. Let me get all these. Now I have all these. Now I have all these poll things in front of my my screen. I can't see stuff. Okay. So um, yeah. So what are disasters? So great question. So that's what we're talking about this this semester. Um, we don't have a textbook. There are disaster textbooks, but I've chosen to not um, use one. Instead, just pull out uh, chapters from things and, and, and readings, et cetera. But um, disasters can take many forms, right? Uh, like this is an example uh, in the Dominican Republic, or hey, you know, this is like Dominican Republic, um, where uh, huge floods washed out this bridge, and these folks are there. And oftentimes, this is what um, uh, we see, right? When we hear the term disasters, we see something about the wake after the event has happened. Um, and it's usually uh, oftentimes very visually arresting, um, you know, very um, uh, scary, very um, uh, stark. Uh, the fire, the, the people displaced, um, what have you. Um, so we just did that poll, and it sounds like a lot of the things that you guys are, are talking about are um, uh, physical phenomenon, right? So they're, they're um, wildfires, there's something about the physics of the planet that, that change, either water was moving around or, or rocks were moving around or, or something of that nature. Um, and those are the classic disasters, right? Those are all uh, definitely count as disasters. Um, the next thing I want to do is we're going to, we're going to, uh, jump into um, uh, some small, some just random breakout groups, or random breakout rooms real quick. And again, just for about, you know, four or five minutes or so, um, uh, we're being groups of three folks, randomly assigned. I want you guys to just talk about um, if, if you've, you know, what, what we've all experienced disasters in some way, shape or form, right? So, so what have you experienced? What, what, what uh, were you um, severely harmed by it? Were you just minimally impacted? Um, what's, your ex what's your personal experience with disasters? So I'm gonna ask you guys to jump into breakout groups, have that discussion, we'll come back and then we'll have a, a, a bit of a group share in terms of what, um, you know, sort of see what, what our collective experience has been like. And so with that, I'm gonna open up the breakout rooms um, just for five minutes, but everybody uh, is in a breakout room now and go ahead and join your breakout rooms and I will recall you all in five minutes. Hey everybody. Hello. Uh, oh, a couple. Oh, yeah, cool. Sam was back out. A couple people are still popping in. <clears throat> All right. How are we doing here? 28 more seconds. Um, All right. Uh, we will get going. Wow, it seems like a very long one minute when I said close the breakout rooms. I, I, I don't know why it's uh, it's going on. <clears throat> okay, just about everybody's back, um, except group group three, group these living it. They're they must be really really getting into their disasters. Okay, 
All right, great. So thanks, everybody. Um, so tell me about uh, tell me about the disasters you guys have experienced, or or was there, was there a theme that came out amongst your your groups? Uh, I can go first. Um, I know for me personally, um, I was one of the two towns where the Thomas Fire originated in in 2017 in December. So from my understanding, the Thomas Fire started sometime in December of 2017. Mm -hmm. I was still seeing the at the time. Uh, I remember um, my best friend who, who was also a student here as well. Um, amongst his neighborhood, was the very first neighborhood, amongst the whole start of the Thomas Fire to be evacuated. They stayed at my place for a couple of days. Um, and then the fire continued to progress and then it was a lot more difficult to contain. So they ended up going to stay with family in LA at the time. My twin brother at the time was also a member of the American Red Cross in Camarillo, I think. So he was an EMS certified. So I remember um, when our power was out in Santa Paula, we decided to spend our time doing some humanitarian aid effort. And um, there was one of like those refugee zones, but I won't say refugee zones, but there was a, a place where people were being allocated towards. It was Oxford College's gymnasium. So most of the time, the duration of Thomas Fire, we were there for like maybe two or three weeks to Probably now doing logistics and enjoying passing out food, playing the bedding. So, yeah, I was literally like away most of like the remainder of 2017 from Santa Paula because of the fire, as it would continue to progress into like 2018. So, that was my experience of it. Yeah. So, so displacement, life upended for a long time. Um, yeah, totally. Um, good. O other folks. Or other other themes that emerged, commonalities. Mostly just the fires, because we haven't really experienced anything but you know fires, at least in Southern California. Um, unless you were alive in the '80s, then you experienced a major earthquake. Yeah, well, I'm, I've I've had earthquakes at at my house here in Ventura County. Um, I remember I can remember feeling. Um, three in the last in the last year year and a half that were like what the hell is that but yeah you're right but em's right as far as like major major destruction type of earthquakes i had just gotten back from well i'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell the story later but i just gotten back from antarctica and was starting grad school at ucla when the northridge quake happened and uh, was completely I, I cannot believe the building i was in did not was not completely pancaked it was it was it was crazy um, other other ones, other other ones you guys have experienced or 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 stories that happened. So I was just saying um, with Sam and Charlene that uh, the only thing I've experienced lately is the fire evacuation too, and it was from the fire that came up in uh, up into Thousand Oaks at the Simi. Uh, I'm sorry, at the Westlake. Area. Oh, was it the Woolsey? The Woolsey fire? Yes. Yes. Okay. That one. Um, that that's about it. So uh, we were evacuated for about forty eight hours or so. So. Yeah. But seeing that, you know, when I'm driving down the freeway during evacuation, seeing that fire come up over the hill and then down again, and it's coming right at you, I said, "Okay, that's enough experience for me. <laughs> I'm out of here." But. And yeah, of course, I, I was through the through the Northridge earthquake too. But uh, you know, after a while, you don't think about these things so much anymore until you get Doctor A's disaster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, when when that fire happened, uh, I was with a group of our students at a conference in San Diego. I'd taken them to a conference, and um, uh, unfortunately. As you guys may remember, that was the borderline shooting. Um, and some of our students were unfortunately caught up in that. Um, uh, and some unfortunately were, were killed. And one of the students that I was with in this conference in San Diego, her, her friend um, very sadly um, passed away, was, was one of the victims of that, that horrible stuff. And so I had to go tell her um, and uh, and then, and, 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 and the, with that conference, we'd driven down individually because people were coming at different times. And then she, she was obviously very distraught, totally understandable. 
but then I'm trying to figure out how to get her home when we, you know, it was like, do I leave her car here or do, what? And then, and then the Woolsey fire broke out and it just was like insanity on top of insanity on top of insanity. That's a theme that unfortunately is becoming more common, right? Where we have one of these events, one of these horrible things. And, you know, maybe back in the day, maybe something horrible would happen. And then we'd have, you know, months or years or whatever to recover. And then we can have the next one. But increasingly we're seeing these, these events snowball or, or at least, you know, really on top of one another. And it makes that resilience, being, being resilient personally, being resilient with our infrastructure, being resilient with our finances and food and water and all, this, all that stuff is, is a real challenge. Um, yeah, absolutely. That was, and my family was like, why aren't you coming home? Like, well, I'm trying to figure out what to do with the student. And then, you know, yeah, then, then of course, campus was evacuated. All around here was evacuated. Uh, other themes or other examples that, uh, uh, that you guys experiences you've had with, with disasters. That was the thing that I wrote down about that San Bernardino train wreck that um, was coming, that train was coming over the Cajon Pass with 60 cars loaded with Chona and it spilled at, at, at a curve. And then with the construction and the cleanup and all that they did, two weeks later, there was a gas line explosion right behind those houses. So they lost seven, then they lost 11. And it was just horrible. Yeah. yeah. Again, this this is this is this is a, a a expanding phenomenon with with these events is the the intensity and frequency and 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 piggybacking on one another that these things are increasingly uh, playing out as. Okay, great. So so any else want to share anything? Other examples or other other experiences you've had? We all have fun uh, medical disaster experience. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we've all been experiencing a pandemic, right? So, so we all have uh, these things in common. It, it, we were, um, it's interesting when I talk to my faculty for a long time, we've, I've said, hey, you know, we should all be prepared to go online, not, not teach online 100%, but, but we should all have the flexibility to jump online for a week or two and not disrupt our instruction. And, you know, for a long time I was saying that and people are like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. And then Thomas Fire 2017, Woolsey Fire Borderline 2018 and, and you know, pandemic. And so pre pretty much not had a year without, without some kind of disruption to our traditional instruction at CSUCI since, since before 2017. Um, and so it's true, all these things come home to roost. Even if, even if we're lucky enough that we're not, directly impacted you know our air quality is impacted our our ability to work or go to school is impacted so yeah absolutely these things have a have a huge reach have a huge reach okay um well thanks for sharing those you guys and uh and let's 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 keep going so let's um uh, talk a little bit about uh uh let's see if i can make this thing work there we go okay so there's still so many screens open. All right, here we go. Um, disasters, what do we mean by disasters? So disasters are something that um, results from um, essentially people, people being in harm's way. So when we think about a disaster, we typically think about this in human terms, in anthropocentric terms. And the um, most common things that first jump into our head are mortality and morbidity. So people passing away or becoming uh, injured or sick in some way, shape or form. We are having these types of events more and more frequently. So over the last decade or so, we're talking on the order of about um, uh, 300, uh, major disasters, right? We, we, we'll also talk about this next week. There's different definitions and scale and magnitude, but you know, what we would consider major disasters worthy of you know, international press coverage type of stuff. Uh, 300 of these per year, that's almost one a day um, across the planet. And so these things no longer affect just a few dozen or hundreds or thousands of people. We're talking at least 
uh, tens of millions of folks each year directly impacted and the cost at least many billions, um, uh, if not uh, hundreds of billions to trillions of dollars per year in terms of um, expenditures needing to be made. So um, uh, those aren't the only metrics to use, but those are common. People sick, people hurt, um, a price tag to respond. Um, so this is just last week, right? So this is the, the Tonga um, volcano. This is the, the largest atmospheric um, uh, eruption that we've seen since uh, Mount Pinatubo in 1991. Um, uh, we'll get to this when we later when we talk about um, in detail uh, volcanoes and things, but suffice it to say, this was sort of a Goldilocks type of volcano. If this volcano had been deeper underwater, we wouldn't have seen this much uh, uh, stuff. If it had been more up in the air, we probably also wouldn't um, uh, have seen this massive shock wave that, that we saw travel around um, you know, a huge amount of the Pacific. Um, but this is, this, is, uh, this is, you know, not thinking about a remote island in Tonga. And, you know, as a consequence, we have uh, boats inundated, cars destroyed in Santa Cruz, uh, California, for example, in, in the wake of the tsunami that was generated uh, following this um, outburst. This is, and so all the, these, these images here are all from uh, the European Space Agency uh, and or NASA, a big consortium, remote sensing stuff. But this, okay, so we're looking at the, so Tonga is an island nation consisting of several different uh, islands. Um, and the eruption was basically over here, uh, uh, the, the thing on the 15th. Um, what we're visualizing right here, though, with these, these highlighted colors, these light colors and hot colors, these are estimated vegetative impacts. These are estimated you know, places you know, over 100 kilometers away that were directly uh, harmed. Um, primarily here, we're talking about ash deposition. So, so the, the plants were covered with ash, neither smothered or, or hurt or in some way, shape, or form harmed. Um, that's how sometimes in ESRM, we, we sometimes think about um, disasters. But the way most people think about disasters is this. So most people think about disasters as, as what it's doing to the human side of the equation. So in this case, this is um, essentially the same data sets, these international earth observing satellites. And um, again, here's, here's that area we were just looking at before. Here's this, this island nation. Uh, this is where, uh, let's see, where am I? I think this is where the eruption happened. And these red, blue, and green are showing some of the smaller islands. And in this case, the, the highlighted colors aren't vegetative impacts. These are impacts to human structures and human infrastructure. And this, so this is typically what triggers the term natural disaster. So if we have a lightning strike that goes off and, and hits a tree, we don't so much care. If we have a lightning strike that goes and hits a radio tower, we would call that a natural disaster. So um, related, there's a couple of related terms here. So we'll just start talking about this. We'll, com we'll continue the conversation next week. But, um, a natural hazard is the first thing. So a natural hazard is the threat that a naturally occurring thing, could be rain, could be lightning, earthquakes, whatever. A natural hazard is the threat that a naturally occurring event could harm humans. So if a thing might harm humans, we call that a hazard or a natural hazard. Once that that thing that could potentially happen happens, that's when we, you, and, and, it, and it has an impact, that's when we use the term natural disaster. So, um, so hazard potential, after it happens, disaster. Um, we are taking a different approach in our class than most classes on natural hazards and natural disasters. So um, natural hazards and then the knock-on effect disasters are traditionally thought of as coming from these natural processes 
that have gone on since the earth has been around. So plate tectonics or what's at the root of earthquakes. Um, uh, energy, uh, differential heating in the atmosphere is what causes hurricanes and, and so on and so forth. Um, most of the thinking about natural hazards has grown out of the history of geophysics. So geophysicists, people that study volcanoes, people that study earthquakes, are the folks that pioneered these ideas and in fact coined these terms, natural hazards, natural disasters. And this has been their bailiwick. This has been their jam for most of, most of you know, modern history when we talk about these things. And indeed, if you take a class at most universities on natural hazards or natural disasters, there almost always be in a geology department um, or, or something similar, geosciences department, planetary sciences type department. And that's cool, those, those, that's important. Those are, those are key things. But I would suggest to you that, um, that that's, um, it's not incorrect thinking, but that's sort of an old way of thinking about these events. And, and that way is overly constraining and, and overly emphasizes the geophysicist physics of these events. That's a key part of most of these events. But um, really, we now need to conceptualize natural hazards and disasters, I think, more broadly, right? And so this is, again, a subject for next week. But, um, you know, what is a, you know, when I asked you guys to tell me about natural disasters, you said that the big ones, you said fire and earthquakes and volcanoes, Right, totally makes sense. Absolutely, those are natural disasters. But um, you know, uh, when we talk about oil drilling, right, fracking to suck out suck out liquids, be it water, be it oil, from underneath the earth, and then that leads to altered um, pressures along fault lines and stuff, and then we have more earthquakes. Is that a natural disaster? You know, it, it might manifest just like a quote unquote natural earthquake, but we clearly are influencing this stuff. Again, a hurricane. Hurricanes have been happening since time immemorial, right? They're a natural feature of our, of our planet. Same phenomenon happens on Jupiter and Saturn and things of that nature. This is not unique to the earth, but oh, that exactly. process of a cyclonic storm um, uh, it's been going on forever, but we are influencing that, right? We are changing the balance of energy, the amount of heat, et cetera, in our atmosphere. So we're starting to impact that. So this notion of, of, of natural hazards, which was created to contrast with stuff in the human realm, it's, it's that, that dichotomy is breaking down. And that, that, con that traditional conceptualization is not quote unquote wrong, but we perhaps need to bring a more sophisticated approach to thinking about disasters broadly writ. Our class is called environmental disasters specifically and not called natural disasters, even though that's the, the shorthand we usually use. And so, um, so we'll be going through this and, and sort of struggling with this ourselves. Is this, is this thing a, 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 a natural disaster, an environmental disaster or or what is that chemical plant blowing up? Is that a natural disaster? Or yes or no? So we'll be um, we'll be talking about these things as we go through the semester. Our first week uh, reading, uh, well, well, this week is really more of a logistics onboarding thing, getting things turned on. But week two, our module for week two is really where we first started getting to our content. And you guys again should have that stuff all go through that, read it, uh, watch it uh, by the start of next week's class. But that's our first sort of toe in the water of starting to think about um, how we conceptualize disasters broadly writ. And so um, with that uh, very brief introduction, I will uh, pause it, uh, stop our sharing here, and, um, 